Hello everyone, I'm Luke with Luke GU Photography and I'm here to help walk you through a simple face swap using Affinity Photo. We have this family here, uh, two pictures, pictures taken back to back for the most part. You have this photo right here, very cute smile on it. I want to take her smile and her face from this photo and add it to this smile so everyone's happy, smiling, looking at the camera and just makes it that perfect family photo. So we're going to go over to the uh, picture of the face that we want, and we're going to hit the rectangular marquee tool. I don't recommend using the selection brush because you want more than just the face right now. We're going to use a mask layer and paint the face in and out for what we want. So we need, we need that extra wiggle room. Select the face, and I'm going to hit Control c to copy that. And then on the photo that we want to use as a background, hit Control V and we will paste that photo. Now we're going to rename this one face just to help differentiate it. So we got the face layer and we have the background layer. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat is the face layer is definitely smaller than the background layer. Her face is smaller than the original photo. So we can bring that up to size. We can scale it up a little bit. One way you can use to help match it up is you can drop the opacity down. I drop it to about 80%. Um, you can tell her face is a little bit more angled than this one was. So we can move that to about a three degree angle and see how that and see how that lines up. So now that we have only 80% opacity on this, you can see how well this one can line up with the original photo. And there we go. You can see that the eyes are lining up. The ears are even lining up very well. Um, yep, even the hair and forehead are lining up to a very good extent. So we're going to drop that up. 100% and that is our new photo we are done no we're not done we need to blend this uh, the face layer into the background so how we're gonna do that we're going to take the mask layer we're gonna paint out all the areas of the face layer that we don't want and we're just gonna blend it together we're gonna use the mask layer because you can paint in and out um, the original photo the original face um, to have it blend so we'll probably be doing that back and forth making sure everything lines up perfectly um, but use that mask layer hit your paintbrush tool and we're going to make sure our hardness is at zero if your hardness is at 100 percent and you try to paint it out you're never going to get that to blend without a lot of hard work right bracket increases the brush size and we can just paint it out. We're actually going to delete the background layer and we're just going to start painting out all the extra bits we really don't need. Um, be careful the closer you get to the face because we don't want to paint much of the face out right now. Uh, left bracket, we can lower the size of the brush to help around those major features of the face that we're going to be added in and right off the bat you can see this is already very close and if you go to the face layer and unclick it you can see the before and the after now even though we're adding some you know, green right here, and it's not perfect or exact, it still matches up pretty dang good. We could erase all of this. But I actually tend to like that green behind her face. It has a little bit more color around it. right here we're actually going to use white nope. no we're not a 
gonna take that black brush, increase that size because I want that nice soft gradient blend in the face. Go white and repaint the white in it. We're gonna blend it back together. Which is alright. If it doesn't match up, especially the color right here. So that looks good. So that's the before and the after. I'm not worried about that little shadow right there. That'll take a lot of time to make that match up exactly. And I don't think it's distracting at all in the photo right here. Um, but obviously, you can take as much time on these photos as you'd like. Uh, if you are going to get close to the skin like this, I do recommend moving the, hard, moving the hardness up. I, n I would never go 100%. Um, most I would ever go is about maybe 75, 80 tops. I mean, and that's if you have a very fine line. Um, what I would do is I'd get that close and just paint an outline around that cheek. And you could paint out the whole background this way if you wanted to. I don't. Control Z to undo. Like I said, you can work on this however long you want. We'll get her original shoulder back in. And we'll just slowly go around. And again, this is only at 54% uh, hardness. And you can see how fine of that line you can get. I highly don't recommend ever going to 100%. You're going to get a lot of pixels. Um, it's just going to look hard and harsh. You don't need that. I'm going to go back down to 54%. And you can see you get that nice soft line blending it all together. I don't want to go up anymore I'm just gonna drop the opacity down a little bit more the the hardness down sorry and there we go we have the new face now one thing I will say is this face is definitely a lot darker than the face up there so we're gonna take select the face layer go to brightness and contrast and we're not going to leave it like that because if we change the brightness and contrast it affects the whole picture we don't want that we just want this layer to affect the face so take that layer drag it down to the face and now it is only changing uh, the face layer and we just want to brighten it up a little bit I want to change contrast too much Unless you had a completely different photo that you needed to, that it needed to match up a little bit more, but we just want to brighten it up just a little bit, just to have it match the rest of the photo. So you can see the brightness before and after, and I'm going to say we're done with that face swap. We'll take one more quick look around the outside. And again, clicking on, clicking off. Chin looks good. Chin does look a little soft right there. We're going to paint that in. And right here. Paint that in. There we go. It's always those little lines that you want to look for. And that's that. Before and after. I always check around the ear too. Ears are very easy for the background ear to, to 
poke through a little bit, ghost through. And there we have it. And now we're going to take that same technique and apply it to a different photo. Same family, but now we're going to focus on this little guy. I like this pose better, especially her. Uh, foot in front of the other, hand up there, just extremely ladylike. Um, she is a pro at posing, just a natural. I uh, like this photo, everything about it except this little guy's looking away. But again, I take multiple photos, especially for families with kids. You got this photo, now she's looking away, but it doesn't matter because we're going to take this guy and add him to this photo. If you look at them both, um, I like his smile and his eyes in this one, obviously looking at the camera compared to looking away. So just like before, we're going to take that marquee tool, go right around that face, get that chin, um, get all the major features and control C, go directly over this photo and control V. And there we have the face. You can already see it's almost, you could almost just line it up already. I mean, with these photos being taken one right after the other from the same angle, um, you know, slightly, slightly different. Um, it makes this job so much easier than taking it from a completely different angle, lighting, it doesn't matter. So again, uh, select that face layer, create that mask, and just to see how quickly we can do this, we're going to get rid of that background layer, and we're going to get rid of all the extra features we don't not need, besides the eyes, the nose, and mouth dollar <laughs> and already uh, you can see that this almost matches up directly to what we need um, if you look at them back and forth you can see the original face is slightly angled uh, his left eye is definitely higher than the face we're trying to put on so we're going to take that and just, oh, we have the mask layer selected. So hit control Z to undo that because I need it matching up. Select the face layer and just probably a good five degrees. And then you can see everything is lining up. Really simple. Everything blends together um, when you're just doing a quick face like this. We're going to, all right, so that right eye is to the right a little bit more. So maybe we don't need that extreme of an angle. We probably only need about two degree. Yep, five degrees was too much. We need to bring this over. That's a lot, drop the opacity a little bit. Mouth is lined up. You can actually see the eyes moving over to look at the camera. If you have that fluid of a movement where it looks like it just transforms into the new face and it's actually moving, that is when you know you have it perfectly lined up. Let's take that, go back, and beautiful. I love it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube if you'd like. Follow me on Facebook at Luke G Photography. I'm hoping to have more of these tutorials to help everyone out, educate each other, and just keep learning. Um, we're all here to help each other out. Thanks for watching.